Tenderfoot TV is making waves in the podcast industry with hits like Up and Vanished, Kim Kardashian's The System, and their latest, a UFO podcast called High Strange. It debuted last month, and it spent two weeks in the top five of Apple's podcasts and has averaged around 300,000 downloads. High Strange took off after the Pentagon's report regarding UFO encounters. Tenderfoot tells the New York Times that it's been profitable since 2017 and is on track to hit a $10 million in revenue this year. Wow. So joining me now is CEO and co-founder of Tenderfoot TV, Donald Albright, and uh, founder Payne Lindsay. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. I am like a big podcast person because I spend a lot of time on the train, so I'm always listening to podcasts. Love Up and Vanished because vanished I'm a true crime person. Um, Thank you. So for people, though, who haven't listened to your latest podcast about UFOs, I want to play a little bit of it. We live in the Milky Way. Venus, Earth, Mars, you know the rest. There are over 100 billion more planets in the same galaxy. And beyond the Milky Way, it's believed that there are likely 10 trillion more galaxies. So doing the math, that brings us to a whopping one septillion number of planets in the universe. So I was one of those grade school kids that should have been sleeping, but I was listening to the radio overnight before podcasts existed and there was Art Bell. Right. And that was my first introduction to like all these strange conversations that people were having out there. And when I listened to this podcast, it's like the little kid in me grew up with much better production value, too, in terms of the conversations. Great production value. What sparked the idea to create High Strange? I mean, honestly, you kind of said it. Uh, just the little kid in me came out and I've always liked a good investigation, a suspenseful story. And this to me is one of the biggest unsolved mysteries of our time, are we alone? And I wanted to take a rational, analytical approach to the topic and see if I can get everyone on board to just try to figure out what's going on out there. And that's what we try to do. So I have another question, because one of the things that makes me skeptical about this topic, and then we're gonna get about like the fi- get into the financial success of this whole thing, is it seems like this preoccupation with UFOs is only happening here. I mean, are there UFO sightings in other countries? It seems like it's a very American conversation. Um, That's a good question, and it's happening everywhere, always has been. It feels like it could easily be some, you know, American folklore, but it really truly isn't. It's If you look it up, it's happening everywhere, and most other governments are treating it pretty much the same. All right, well, okay, that's good to know. Um, So let us talk about this. I, I literally every week we run a story about a media company that's laying off, slashing. We just, you know, did this whole thing about Vice filing for bankruptcy. The absolute opposite is happening with Tenderfoot. It's remarkable. What do you, why do you think this is so successful? Don, Don what's well, that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's. When we first built the company, it was built off of the back of one successful podcast, uh, which was Up and Vanish. So we really built it in a smart way, being having invested in ourselves. We knew we couldn't take huge swings and big risks because, um, you know, we, we couldn't take a loss. So the risks that we were taking were very calculated. We were betting on ourselves. And we really kept that same mentality. Once we had one hit podcast, we scaled based on our audience. So we gave them more true crime and more true crime. Mm. And then over the past couple of years, we decided to branch out a little more broadly with High Strange, with Radio Rental and others, but really doubling down on uh, ourselves and also looking at other avenues of, uh, of revenue like subscription, which is coming in handy in a down um, ad market. Mm-hmm. But Donald, you know, as you know, the landscape now is awash with true crime podcasts. Um, there are probably other UFO podcasts that I don't know about. But, I mean, I know within the first 30 seconds if I'm going to stick to a true crime podcast, and it doesn't have to do with, like, whether the crime is intriguing. There's something about the storytelling that it's got to, like, hook me or not hook me. What would you say are sort of the key elements, Donald, of a successful podcast that you could apply to almost any topic? Well, I think first and foremost, it's that relatability to the host, which Mm. is why, you know, is one of the biggest if not the biggest true crime podcaster out there especially in terms of the narrative narrative form and i think it's because people relate to a host like you said you're on the train those earbuds are right in your ear it's a very personal relationship because you can't even see the person 
So I think it's the storytelling, it's the care that goes into the stories. And like you said earlier, it's the production value as well. You have to entertain someone enough to stick around, then they'll learn to care about that story. They'll learn that what, what can they do? What's that call to action that they have um, where they can actually impact a story that's you know a cold case or an unsolved crime. Mm -hmm. So it's that relatability factor for sure. And I think, you know, just making sure that you're telling stories that are uh, both uh, uh, under under told and, and teaching people, even if they're not ready to learn, you know, you, that entertainment value reels them in and they end up learning something and being active in a, in a cold case. Uh, Payne, if somebody thinks, oh, oh, there's no way, I'm not really that interested in UFOs, do you have a particular um, episode that you're like, but you got to listen to this one? I would say just press play on episode one. I mean, I, I, I kind of made it for you then. If you don't like, if you don't believe it, then yeah. this is the podcast for you. Because I, I, I was skeptical too going into the subject matter and, you know, came out of it thinking a, a, a lot differently, but it's made for the non-UFO person. And either way, it's a fun ride and it's, it's not kooky, I promise. Yeah, that's so true. And I think you're so right about episode one. That's what's, that drew me in immediately. And it did feel like an intimate conversation with a few people that I really like and I think are really smart. Um, Donald and Payne, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us.